Suppose we want to randomly generate a number in the range 1 to 6. Well, if we were only considering whole numbers, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 or 6, we would say that each number has a probability of 1 in 6 of being chosen, such as six-sided die. But in this case, we're not just talking about whole numbers. We're saying any number in the range 1 to 6. So it could be 2.5, it could be pi, it could be e, it could be 3.79. There's actually an infinite number of possibilities here. So the probability that x equals 3 is, in fact, 0. It's so unlikely that if we consider all the possible numbers from 1 to 6, the, the probability of choosing any one of those numbers is 0. So in this kind of distribution, we're usually looking at probabilities of less than or greater than a particular number. If we consider this graph, so we have all the numbers from 1 to 6 and this time we're looking at the probability that x is less than or equal to 3. Now when you first saw this question you might have thought well it's the numbers 1 to 6 less than or equal to 3 it would be a half but looking at the graph you can see it's not a half because we're actually not going down to 0 here. So if we were to split the whole graph into rectangles the probability of choosing a number less than or equal to 3 is actually 2 fifths. Now because of the nature of the distribution it would make no difference if we said the probability that x is less than 3. That would also be 2 fifths. Because the probability of picking a particular number is negligible. We say it's 0. The probability of choosing a number between 2.5 and 3.5 represented by this black area here, is one-fifth. So what's this value of k here? Remember that the total value of the probability needs to be one. So if we have a range of possibilities from one to six, that means the length of this rectangle is five, and so k must have a value of 0 0.2 to make the area of this rectangle equal to 1. So this type of distribution is called a uniform distribution because each number has a uniform probability of being chosen and because of the shape of the graph it's also called a rectangular distribution. The function that defines the graph is the probability density function or PDF of the random variable x. Because the total area under the graph must be 1, we can work out the value of k. In other words, using the integral notation, the integral from a to b of f of x with respect to x must be 1. So in this example, our a is 1, and our b is 6, and our f of x is k, which in this case is 0 0.2. And when we integrate that, we get 0.2x and substituting in those values of 6 and 1, 0 0.2 times 6 is 1.2, subtract 0 0.2 times 1 is 0 0.2 and so we do get the required value of 1. To work out the probability that x is between 5 and 6, we can multiply those values by k, so 6k take 5k is k, which is 0 0.2. But it's often easier to work out the probability using the graph. We can see that this graph can be divided into five equal rectangles, each with a width of 1 and a height of 0 0.2. So the probability that x is between 5 and 6 is 1 over 5 or 0 0.2. So we can define f of x as 0 0.2 for values of x between 1 and 6 inclusive and 0 for all other x values. So just a few notes on rectangular distributions. The probability that x is between a and b is the area under y equals f of x 
from x equals a to x equals b. Graphically, y equals f of x was y equals k, which is 0 0.2. So the probability that x is between 5 and 6 would be the area under the function from x equals 5 to x equals 6. Secondly, because the probability that x is equal to any particular value is negligible, in other words, 0, we can use the probability that x is greater than or equal to a and the probability that x is greater than a interchangeably. Thirdly, notice the open and filled circles. So back to the graph, you'll see the red lines here represent the function and we use open circles and closed circles to show which value to use. So f of 1 is where the closed circle is, which is k, and also f of 6 is k. Now these are often omitted because of the reasons given in part 2, which are it makes no difference whether we include a or don't include a, the probabilities are the same. And fourthly, f of x has to be greater than or equal to 0 throughout the range of values from a to b. Otherwise, it wouldn't be valid as a probability distribution. Now, if we know that we're dealing with a uniform or rectangular distribution, and we know the values of a and b, we can work out that value of k, because we know that the area of this rectangle needs to be 1. And the length of the rectangle is b minus a. So b minus a multiplied by k needs to equal 1, which means that k must be 1 over b minus a. So we can define our probability distribution as f of x is 1 over b minus a for values of x between a and b, and 0 for all other x values. And we say that the continuous random variable is uniformly distributed on the interval a less than or equal to x less than or equal to b. Now we can also write that using square brackets. If we were saying a less than x less than b, then that interval can be written in round brackets. And if that were the case, then our open and filled circles would be reversed. So if it were a less than x less than b, the filled circles would be at the bottom and the open circles would be at the top. Or we could have combinations of these. So if we had including a but not including b, it might look like this. Filled circle, open circle. Now the mean of the distribution is a plus b over 2. Have a think about why that might be the case. Well, clearly a uniform or rectangular distribution is symmetrical, and in a symmetrical distribution, the mean is equal to the median. So the mean is halfway through the distribution, calculated by a plus b over 2. So in that example we used at the beginning of this lesson, a was 1, b was 6, 1 plus 6 over 2 is 3.5, and we can see that 3.5 would be right in the middle of this rectangle. So we'll work through a couple of examples. As soon as you think you've got the hang of things, then please pause the video and try them for yourself. Firstly, we have a continuous random variable x, with this probability distribution. So to find the value of k, remember it's 1 over b minus a, so 1 quarter. Another way to think of it would be the area of this rectangle needs to be 1, it has a length of 4, and so it must have a height of 1 quarter. The probability that x is less than 3 is represented by this black shaded area, and you can see that it's half of the rectangle. Alternatively, we could substitute in values of 1 and 3, multiply by k, and subtract. So 3k minus k 
is 2k and k was 1 quarter, so still 1 half. Thirdly, the probability that x is between 2 and 5. So again, we can say that this is 5k minus 2k, which is 3k, and therefore 3 quarters. Or we can do this graphically. So between 2 and 5 is represented by this blue shaded area and you can see that it is three quarters of the rectangle. Finally we have a conditional probability question. So what's the probability that x is less than three given that it is between two and five? So now we're just looking at the blue shaded area. Within this blue shaded area the probability that x is less than three is represented by this red shaded area and so that's one third of the blue area. We could also think about this as being the probability that x is between 2 and 3 over the probability that x is between 2 and 5 and using the k notation 3k take 2k is k and 5k take 2k is 3k, still giving us a probability of one third. In the second example, we're given a continuous random variable x and told that it's uniformly distributed in the interval 2 less than or equal to x less than or equal to 10. Now, although we're not given a diagram in the question, it's always a good idea to include a diagram when you're working with probability distributions. So the fact that it's uniformly distributed means it's a rectangular distribution and it's uniformly distributed over the interval 2 to 10 inclusive. So if we were to use those open and closed circles we'd have closed circles at the top and open circles at the bottom. And this would be some value of k yet to be determined. The probability that x is less than or equal to 5, well, we could divide our rectangle up. 2 to 10 is 8. Well, there's our value of k already. It's going to be 1 over 8. So we could easily split our rectangle to work out some of these probabilities graphically. Halfway between 2 and 10 is 6. Halfway between 2 and 6 is 4. And we're looking for the probability that x is less than or equal to 5. So that is 3 eighths of the rectangle. Alternatively, we could say that it is 5k minus 2k, and k is 1 eighth, still giving us an answer of 3 eighths. So the probability that x is between 3 and 8, 8k minus 3k is 5k, so 5 eighths. And we'll show this graphically as well. So between 3 and 8, is this red shaded area of the rectangle. So that's 5 eighths of the rectangle shaded. And then thirdly, a conditional probability. What's the probability that x is less than or equal to 5, given that x is between 3 and 8? So that is this black area here. Between 3 and 5, given that x is between 3 and 8. So we're only looking at the section from 3 to 8, and of that, 3 to 5 is shaded. So even just counting the number of rectangles of width 1 unit, we've got 2 out of 5 rectangles shaded. Alternatively, we could see this as the probability that x is between 3 and 5 over the probability that x is between 3 and 8. So that's 2k over 5k, also 2 fifths.